extremely successful English translations. Um, and I wondered if you think that uh, you know this culture. I mean, Indian English is only slowly waking up to translating contemporary Malayalam literature. Um, is that having some kind of effect on the way Malayalis are reading and writing? Yes, certainly, because. Uh uh, I mentioned these novels. These are not uh, popular but for novels. No. These two novels are these two Bastian's novels and Gerbera's novels. Even won the, the Academy Awards. That's right. And, this, and they're extremely that, serious. Like your novel is, uh, is quite an experimental novel in many ways. Uh, and uh, the English translation. Uh, before also we had lot of English translation from Malayalam. That is Ovi Vijay and the Right. The but, classics. Uh, but uh, now. It is more popular, and uh, uh, even my book uh, uh, also read writing in English and abroad. Yeah. Uh, and uh, nowadays, after maybe after 70s uh, or uh, 60s, uh, a revival of Malayalam language is happening in, in, in translation. Mm -hmm. After the 70s, there was there is no English translation for long period. That's right. And nowadays, in, in 2010s. It is started again. That means uh, somewhere some somebody is started to listen to Yeah. They are uh, keen on Malayalam language, and uh, somebody is aware that uh, uh, something is happening in Malayalam language. Yeah. This is uh, this is happy for us. It is. Um, Masha, so I have a two prompt question for you on this subject of translation. One, if if there is in fact you know I mean if there is in fact some sort of switch flipped on somewhere else in India about an awareness of what's of new Malayalam literature. Um, how do you read that? And um, the second thing I wanted to ask you was, of course, about how um, you know how this is now finally a, a, a dialogue, uh, because as we uh, we spoke about earlier, uh, Malayalam in fact is a very rich receiving language itself. Yeah, I, th I think there are two reasons why uh, maybe uh, Malayalam uh, fiction, particularly, and generally Malayalam literature, became more. Uh, more popular in India. Uh, one reason is has little to do with literature. The publishing houses uh, uh, now find that well, they do not have enough uh, good stuff written in English, right. and so out of necessity also they reach out to the languages. And when they reach out to the languages, Malayalam happens to be one of the first languages they reach out to for two reasons. One because uh, at least they know, even if they haven't read, that Malayalam is one of the um, more advanced uh, literatures of, uh, of India, without, without doubt. Because I, I have some idea of the landscape and I know that uh, our poetry, our fiction, you know, uh, uh, definitely, uh, uh, I mean, they are uh, of great quality. Uh, so that is that one major. And secondly, there are good translators who are coming up uh, uh, in the new generation. We, we did not have very good translators in the past. But now, because the, there is a whole new generation educated in English, but who are also well versed in the mother tongue, and so the availability of translators is also a major reason. So one is the quality, uh, I mean, quality literature, and the second is the availability of translators. And the third, of course, the necessity uh, that uh, prompts the publishers, major publishers, also the OUP and Penguin, to look for uh, translations from the dialects. Yeah. You can add the question, I think. Uh, <laughs> let, let me add this one, because we are. Uh, uh, telling about the, the translation from Malayalam to other languages. The same thing is happening to the Malayalam also. Right. Uh, whether recently, Pahlo Goyal's uh, recent novel, it is translated into Malayalam before English. This is that much uh, <laughs> enthusiasm yeah. is going on. And, and not only uh, Pahlo Goyal like that, like we, we had Marquez or Jose or Orhan Pabmo and, yeah. and uh, Many la many writers, prominent writers are translated into Malayalam. Uh, in fact, the, the, the Malayali can get an idea of world literature without knowing English. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Because what is happening now? Yeah, I mean, that that's important. Because earlier we had translations of old classics and all the Victor Hugo and all those people. All those happened on the first story, for example. But now, if somebody gets a Booker Prize, for example, a Memorial Booker Prize or something, in six months or one year, you have a translation of that work in Malayalam. So contemporary, and one of our writers, Ennis Madhavan, once was asked who is the most popular Malayalam writer, and he said Gabriel Garcia Marquez. So this, this actually sums up uh, the, the whole situation right. that uh, they are considered almost part of Malayalam. Yeah, uh, Masha, how did this come to happen? Because as you made it clear that it's not just about uh, you know the last ten or twenty years, 
Malayalis have been translating from other languages for what, almost a century now? Yeah, indeed. Uh, no, it, it, it just many reasons. One is that the Malayalam language itself is a very cosmopolitan language. It has words in Portuguese or in Dara, because this is Goa, I should particularly say uh, that some of our most popular, the word for washroom is a, is a Portuguese word in Malayalam. Right. Uh, it comes from uh, the word. Again, the word for, or, I mean, Janala, for example, for yeah. Indo, is a Portuguese word. Right. So, Portuguese, Dutch, French, uh, no, we have words from all over the world, and, and, and Arabic particularly, we have a whole version of Malayalam we, called we had Arabic three, Malayalam. Uh, 3,000 words from Arabic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have a whole version of Malayalam called Arabic Malayalam. In these beautiful Mopla songs, or right. Muslim uh, songs and poems have been written. So, so there is something cosmopolitan about the very spirit of Malayalam, right. and Malayalam has been extremely receptive when it comes to translations. I could compare it only perhaps with Hindi, which is also very alive in, in, in translation. Uh, uh, these are two languages which keep translating from other Indian languages and also from languages abroad. Right. Uh, so, uh, so there is a kind of translating consciousness in this part of the Malayali, Malayali psyche. Mm. And also we are eager to know what is happening around the world. Mm. Because we always have this uh, relationship with the other parts of the world. Right. Uh, like you also quoted Kesari, whether uh, Kerala is a chapter in the history of Rome or Rome is a chapter in the history. Because we had Romans and Greeks and Arabs, all, the, all those people coming for trade. And they, they took away our paper, but they gave us words, they, they enriched our languages. And uh, that way, there has been a continuous exchange uh, um, among uh, you know, all these different languages. Right. And Malayalam has been enriched by, and Malayalam now is perhaps also trying to enrich other languages because our uh, poetry or fiction. Uh, they have begun to travel in a big way into other languages. Here I have a friend uh, whose friend had translated my poetry into German. And so we have, uh, we have many, uh, I mean, uh, we, now we are getting translated also into European languages and all that. So uh, I think that there is a, there's a very extremely meaningful and vibrant humanity between Malayalam and all the uh, languages. Because, because that is our environment. I would say Malayalam has a particular ecology, a particular environment, uh, which is essentially multilingual. And we have always lived in that. Uh, you know, uh, in that kind of an environment, reading yeah. literature from other languages, translating, yeah, and translating from, from our language. Right. So that is how the language has grown, literature has grown, and it is just becoming more and more Right. And, and in a country where cosmopolitanism can often be such a fraught idea, um, you know, I mean, we're still constantly thinking about what is ours and what is someone else's. Uh, Malayalam has really benefited as much told us, um, you know, from never having this problem at all. Um, of course, a new area, a new geographical, well, not new, but a, a, a very important geographical sphere of influence, of course, is the Gulf, um, where, uh, you know, where you've lived and worked and written. Um, and how does, can you talk a little bit about how the Gulf figures in the imagination of the Malayali writer and about the fact that this is becoming, uh, this has become very important to us as readers and writers? I think <coughs> Gulf is the one of the largest diaspora anywhere in the world. Right. Gulf Malayali diaspora is the largest one, maybe right. more than 25 lakhs. Or all the, all yeah. that uh, amount of people are staying there from last uh, 60 or 70 years. Hmm. But uh, the stories are still uh, untold. Uh, right. We know only very few stories, and that is from huge winning stories very glittering stories yeah. and uh, most of the people are actually they are suffering in, in different ways mm. but uh, it is not uh, not addressed by the language or, or, the, or the culture or the, or the, in the, in the, right. in the culture mm. but uh, in, in after uh, 2000 lot of people uh, from the literature side they are moving to the Gulf countries and they know that uh, uh, the, the entire situation is different and we have to address these people, the silent people also to the, to the mainstream or address to the language. Uh, this is maybe the diaspora di literature is aroused, uh, around the world, it may be the part of the thing. Uh, we have to tell the silent people story also. Uh, from there itself, uh, we, we started to tell the stories of the diaspora from their perspective. 
and you were one of the first writers to do this. And uh, uh, not only me, there are many others also. Right. I am one of the successful, that's why. <laughs> and, but there are a lot of writers are there, and uh, I think it is the most vibrant society, diaspora uh, society right. uh, abroad, because they are. Uh, they do have a literature community, they, are, they, are, uh, they do have a very weekend uh, discussions and uh, readings and uh, they are very updated in languages and uh, they are very updated in, uh, in, uh, in literature, in poetry, uh, most prominent writers from Kerala going out there and uh, doing discussions with them. So it is uh, not only in, uh, in, in, in Gulf, now it is in, when you go to USA, can meet so, uh, a certain number of people are very, very enthusiastic speaking in, in, in Malayalam literature. Mm. If you go Australia, if you go Ireland, wherever you go, a Malayali community, they will meet together and they are discussing in, in, in the recent literature. Right. Uh, so I think uh, it, it, it will help in the language in many ways. Now the language is spreading around the world. Uh, if you think about in 60s or 70s, uh, a diasporic society had no chance to mingle with the language anyway. Mm. They are mingling with their own language. Right. Uh, but now the, the, the uh, in this new world, the, the internet is came, came up, the social media is came up. Every person is mingling with the native language, with, with Malayalam mm. in their everyday life. Yeah. Yeah, every day they are using some, uh, some uh, messages for messages or they are reading the newspaper in, in Malayalam. Mm -hmm. uh, so the language is spreading around the world now. It, it, it is helping us also. Right. Uh, and a uh, lot of uh, writers also coming from this historic society. Before they had no chance to write anything in their own language. Now right. uh, they had a uh, lot of chance uh, in writing Malayalam also. So, mm -hmm. Uh, we get uh, so many so many new experience from this uh, diasporic world. Uh, there are so many writers coming from USA, so many writers from Ireland or Australia, and uh, certainly from uh, Gulf also. Uh, a few of the novels uh, uh, won last uh, Kerala Sahitya Academy Award last few years. It is all from uh, diaspora. That means it, it, it is. It is helping this diasporic society is helping the growth of my own Right. Um, I'm, inter I'm interested in um, you know in asking you both quickly, and then we can hopefully get some questions from the room. Um, you know, just about some something in Malayalam literature that that means a great deal to you as a reader that the rest of uh, the world hasn't found out about yet. So okay, let's phrase it this way. If there's one untranslated Malayalam novel that you would that you would like to see translated, what would that be? Uh, there are many, but okay, uh, you can more than one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the problem is uh, many of the novels are not uh, translated. That is the main main oh. thing. Uh, if you translate, uh, it will it will lose everything. I think <laughs> the taste, the, the flavor, and everything will lose. That's why I think I am. But uh, I wish to translate Chela Vishuddha Janmangurla Vishayashan, then uh, it is by C. Ashwara, mm -hmm. and Chora Shastram by B.J. Uh, James. Okay. Uh, and uh, so many things. But uh, Chora Shastram is going to translate for, for, for many years there. So many are trying to translate, but. Uh, it's, it's too complex, to, complex and it to, is. to accomplish successfully. How, how do you see this, Masha? Uh, what, what would you like to see translated best? <laughs> uh, like Banyan said, it's, it's, uh, it's almost impossible to make a choice because only only 1% of our good literature has actually appeared in English. Uh, so it, it means, uh, yeah, uh, these are two novels definitely I would also love to see in translation. Uh, there are events coming up, there are, there are also a lot, uh, our short story is doing wonderful. And somehow, you know, the publishers are more interested in novels and even if they go approach them, the short story, they ask them to develop it into a novel and come back. Uh, so that is situation really <laughs> generally speaking. But our short story is doing well. I would like to see some of our best short story writers, especially of the, of the new generation. You know, you have Sobhashtra, you have Santosh and Chikana, um, uh, you 
Africa, 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 Africa,
choose a word or something, we always thinking about the translated, uh, translation possibilities, how it is translated. And uh, that is in mind, that is a reality actually. Now, so uh, our, our novels are easy to translate and it is easy to write as few people. But uh, uh, in the earlier stages, they are, they, the writers were not at all uh, bothered about the translation. They, uh, they wrote in, in very indigenous uh, languages. That is very difficult nowadays for the translation. Uh, we are something, some, some, somewhat we are aware of that. Yeah. And that is in, uh, in, in our mind. Yeah, yeah, we are, we, are, so, we, are, yeah. we are aware of the audience. Yeah. So I'm afraid that look, it looks like that's all we have time for. Um, I'm so sorry that we didn't get more time for questions uh, from you. But the writers are uh, available to talk, I'm sure, off stage. Uh, thank you all for listening. And thank you for being here. Thank you, Roger. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure.